Oh, it's a windy day in the orchard, it's a Friday afternoon and uh, tomorrow's our biggest day of the year really, it's our Apple Day event. Apple Day is theoretically the, uh, uh, the 21st of October, it's a festival that was started quite recently by a group called Common Ground, if you go to their website commonground.org.uk it's worth having a look. Uh, but anyway, we, we felt that it was better for us because a lot of our apples ripen earlier, so we're getting ready for our big day tomorrow and um, one of the things that we do is offer some freshly pressed juice. I'm just going to stitch a few films together here, hopefully, to show you, talk you through how we do juice. First of all, let's have a look at these apples here in my hand. We do not use windfalls to put in juice, but we only use picked cull. Now you might think, why is he using these apples to make juice when um, you know you can sell apples for a decent amount of kilo? Well, take a look at this, and I'll show you. Okay. They were lovely two weeks ago, but they're now too soft. I can't sell apples like these. This is um, this is Laxton's Epicure. Uh, it's a lovely apple. It's really, really tasty, and it's it's ripe uh, for about two weeks, and then it loses the crunch. It's still a tasty apple, full of lovely juice. Lovely juice. But I, I can't sell it, it's not crunchy. They're all good clean apples and we're washing them. Just fired up the good old uh, drink and stratton. Should be just about warm enough now. This is about to make a terrible awful noise and I'm just going to show you a very short bit of uh, what happens when we grind. Don't drop the camera, Stephen. Hi, I've crushed about two boxes of washed, of picked washed select apples. Uh, um, into pulp through the um, uh, centrifugal apple press. And now, this is a rack and cloth uh, press. So, this is the mill. I've milled the apples first. It's two distinct operations. The apples have been milled and now they're going into a rack and cloth press. This is stainless steel. These are made of acacia wood. This is stainless steel. This, is what this piece of uh, metal here is called a former. A former. And uh, it's a rack and cloth press. This is a rack. These ones come from Vigo and they're made, I believe, of acacia wood, riveted with aluminium. You can't use ordinary steel. You can make these yourself. I'll tell you later about details. This is a cloth made of nylon. In the past, it'll be made of horse hair. Okay. This is a special plastic shovel, and here's the pulp, otherwise known as pomace. It's necessary to reduce the um, it's necessary to reduce the apples to this kind of pulp before you can start to make up what's called a cheese. Now the cheese is basically a stack of um, uh, rack and cloth arrangements of um, what I'm doing here. Anyone, uh, if you'll forgive me uh, for putting this sort into your mind, anyone who's changed a baby's nappy will have some idea uh, what I'm doing. Basically, you need to fold these cloths. There's, there's several different ways of folding them, but uh, basically, that's how I tend to fold them like that. Oh, we're wasting some. <laughs> Put the next cloth on, try and build this up neat as, uh, as you go. Okay, now I'll show you that again when it's finished. Okay, I'm just finishing off this cheese. The cheese simply means the stack here. Just finishing off this top one. There are six in here. There are... This is the block. Put that on top. Bring this down. Now, most of you watching this don't need me to tell you that this um, actual press here is not beyond the skills of a reasonable do-it-yourself worker. 
and you don't need me to tell you that. But you, I, mean, I bought this, but you can make something like this out of wood and bolts. So I think at the top there, right, just spin it round. By the way, the only thing you ever lubricate this with is, is, with, is petroleum jelly, or else, and or um, uh, liquid paraffin, because they're completely non. They have no odour to them. Do they get in by mistake? But uh, yeah. Um, Beer, good a drink though it is, is made from barley with hops and water and yeast, and rather a lot of energy. The amount of energy that goes into making um, cider is considerably less. Basically, we use a bit of energy. I use some. I use some petrol uh, to uh, crush um, crush the uh, apples. Uh, I'm pressing this cider in the orchard in which the apples grew, so the food miles so far are zero. Press apple juice I'm pressing today is going to be, uh, there's a little ratchet thing on here, uh, probably worked out. Uh, this is going to be offered for sale at our uh, um, Apple Day event tomorrow, uh, just under about a mile from here, so there'll be one food mile on it. And if we don't sell, uh, we'll let the yeast get to work, turn it into cider, a hard cider that is. And uh, there we are, five gallon. The apple is a generous and versatile fruit. You can make juice, there you go, five gallons. You can make satisfactory juice out of any out of any apple but a blend is usually better uh, so if you're interested in finding out more there's a lot on the web andrew lee that's l-e-a andrew lee uh, his cider portal is very good and there is um a work the cider workshop it's a google group the cider the cider workshop uh, is mainly run by andrew lee and my other friend um uh, jez and uh there's loads of information there, friendly people, beginners, absolute beginners and total beginners and people who just want to get a sniff and find out what it's about are all uh, very welcome, friendly lot of people uh, on the, the cider workshop. So don't ask me loads of questions, I haven't got time to answer them but they'll already have been answered very well on the cider workshop and on Andrew Lee's excellent uh, cider. And for those in the United States particularly, there's an excellent book called uh, what was it? Making Sweet and Hard Cider by Prue and Nichols. It's Annie, uh, which was Annie, Prue, P-R-O-U-L-X, and Nichols, and you get it from Amazon, and it's very, very good, and there's nothing you need to know that isn't in that book.